Good morning, traders. Today is January 21st, Saturday. This is Brad Matheny. We're going through the custom indexes today. As I've been telling you, the markets are setting up for what I believe to be a wave five initial impulse move. Uh, that is going to be a, let's come back over here and try to show you, that is going to be a fairly extensive move to the upside based on my analysis we've seen a peak we've seen a devaluation phase the fed has taken enough effort in my opinion to try to stop uh, and uh, thwart inflation um, the downward cycle of deflation may move into a recessionary cycle but i think the amount of money that's put into the global economy and the fact that central banks uh, and uh, and others have been able to navigate this devaluation phase fairly efficiently is going to be very similar to 2002, 3, 4 after the dot-com bubble burst. <clears throat> I think we're going to see essentially a uh, basing bottoming formation. We're going to see revaluation. We're going to see a stagnation of assets. For example, real estate will likely move downward other assets will revalue gold will continue and silver will continue to move higher oil likely is going to attempt to uh, move downward my target is still 62 to 64 um, I believe we're going to see a uh, downward cycle trend as consumers deal with higher inflation higher uh, product uh, costs uh, because of this inflationary cycle and this is likely going to last maybe into 2024 before we start to see the stock market really begin to appreciate to the upside. So what we have right now, ladies and gentlemen, is an apexing formation. I've tried to draw it with this blue line here across this blue line here. We're basing and bottoming. We've got a, a very solid A, B, C, D, E formation here. We've come back up and consolidated around this range, briefly broke out of this cycle last week. Uh, I believe we're going to see more volatility for the next two or three weeks. This is not the time to get overly aggressive on anything. You need to stay cautious, stay uh, protected, uh, hedge your position in metals. Metals will likely consolidate for a week or two as well uh, as we move into this uncertain period. But then, as I've drawn here in this green line, we're likely to move out of this cycle into a, let me do this without dragging the wrong thing, into kind of a melt-up cycle over here, targeting first a move possibly up in the 43, 42, 43 area, then consolidating again, then moving back up into 44, 50, maybe 44, 80, then consolidating again, and then eventually near the end of the year, uh, which is actually 2024 back over here, potentially being up into new highs. So end of 2023, early 2024, we may see a move back up into new highs. Uh, and that could be, you know, let's say between November of 2023 and June, July of 2024. I think we're going to see a moderate melt up here, which gives us about from where we're at now, somewhere up in that area and that gives us about a 12 percent rally potentially this year so understand that that's a pretty good rally that's a pretty good basing formation if my analysis is correct and we do see this melt up we're going to be able to trade it very efficiently if we do not see that melt up uh, and we do see more weakness then we are going to come back down we're going to retest these support levels right around 38 uh, 15 maybe 38 20 then app apparently come down and test this 36 52 level but this is like I said this is a, an alternate um, downside uh, resolution that in my opinion would take some sort of a crisis event which I don't believe is going to happen the debt ceiling issue and the other issues will be resolved in my opinion the politicians in the US are not foolish enough to um, shut down the world uh, in regard to this they are going to negotiate some things they are going to try to uh, uh, contain 
what's going on with the spending issues. Uh, but again, the the scenario is not yet at a major crisis event. I mean, we we need something that's going to be global um, and the and really large scale. The only thing I can think of that's that would be something like that would be, you know, if the debt ceiling issue pushes itself into a extended U.S. government shutdown for more than say a year or two then yeah, I mean, we could have some big problems. If we get into a big world war, yeah, we could see some big issues. Uh, if we see some global financial crisis uh, take place where the U.S., primarily the U.S. and or China and or most of Europe or Asia were to fall into some contagion crisis event, yeah, that could be quite uh, dastardly for the market. But I don't believe we're at that point yet. I think we're... <clears throat> moving through a transitional phase um, that was the post-COVID bubble, uh, devaluing. I think we've established the devaluing process down here fairly solidly around support. And as you've seen through my longer-term videos, uh, and I can do this here possibly if I have it, we really have some very long-term support. This purple line here very long-term support going back to 2009, 2010, and that's this line right here going all the way across. And this is very long-term support from 2009 and 10. So reality, ladies and gentlemen, for us to move into a real solid bearish market at this phase, we've got to get down below 3563 roughly. Let's call it 3560. <clears throat> and at that point, yeah, we could be in some serious trouble. So be, be aware that this area right here, I'm trying to grab this and drag this out. This area right here, try to change the color, is the crisis line in the sand mode telling us that we have got serious, serious crisis phase taking place if we get below that zone. So right there, that reddish zone. If we get below that zone on a solid breakdown, then yes, we are looking at a big contraction in the market. We stay above this zone and above this support zone over here, then we are in solid bullish trending territory. We're well above support. This is just a pullback in a bullish trend. So there's your broad scoping analysis. Now let's get through the custom indexes as we move forward. The accumulation phase index is stalling, which is very good to see. We've seen upward trending taking place. U.S. market is stalling off of this deep uh, bottom here. Let's see here if we can get some kind of a, a real rally phase out of this. Remember, I'm only expecting about a 12 or 15 percent rally this year out of this base move. That'll put us back up into these highs back over here. Um, but in reality, that's where I think we're at. I think we're going to be consolidating and into a mild melt up of maybe 11, 12, 13 percent, maybe a little more. But so far, so good. We are consolidating. I think as long as the wheels stay on the train and the uh, markets kind of um, migrate through this uh, revaluation phase, we're looking at a fairly solid base. Custom cash flow index has moved higher. Um, this is a good indication. I did indicate that I thought we could see some consolidation downward last week after getting up above this level. We did see a little consolidation this week. We're not out of the woods, like I said, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, two or three, maybe four weeks more of consolidation, which will translate into volatility. Uh, potentially a bit of a deeper downside move, maybe down into these levels again. So imagine it's come up here, could come back down into here. Um, shaking out bulls, shaking uh, uh, bears. Uh, bears have been very prevalent. It's so funny to watch these guys try to short this market all the way up. Uh, but understand, this is just volatility. It's it's shaking itself out as the markets are apexing into that flag formation. And then eventually, I think it'll resolve to the upside. Custom Consumer Engagement Index. Consumers are coming back, um, is what we're seeing here. The money's flowing into the markets. And their consumers are buying. So get ready. We're getting this deep, deep bottom. Nice, solid, double bottoming formation over here. 
even though it's a little too deep off here for a double bottom um, we're getting really solid recovery just like I predicted off of this consumer engagement index next target is up here if we can get up above these previous highs then we're looking at a real solid upward recovery here that'll probably prompt the transportation index to move into positive territory as well the devaluation index uh, is stalling this is from a couple weeks back I actually have to recreate this one uh, but we're getting a good stalling basing formation back over here I expect it to continue to stall out uh, and try to form a base or a bottom basically just form into kind of a rounded consolidation kind of like this and then move upward so it's looking very positive uh, large cap index is a monthly chart large caps have moved back up to the upside I'd like to see this try to establish a new high here um, we really do need to move away from this downward sloping trend uh, we've seen this consolidation it's been fairly solid um, this is a standard uh, type of a consolidation downward trend historically you'll see that the same type of level the same range takes place we are nearing the end of this cycle I'm gonna have to draw new cycle patterns going to the right side here but we're nearing the end of this depreciation cycle we got a couple more months to go which puts us into April May of 2023 that means that we will start a new appreciation phase and given the downward cycle that we're at I would not be surprised to see it start to roll into the new cycle phase like it did right here back into the upside uh, trending so be aware this was 2015-16 was an election year uh, prior to an election year we had this same type of consolidation we could see this move a little bit higher back up maybe into this area and then consolidate into 2024 which is an election year um, so be aware that we could just move into that upward consolidation waiting for election results the global asset index is doing the same thing kind of forming a base bottom now I'll show you on the on the US to uh, smart cash index global index global markets are recovering at this point faster than uh, US markets which could be a very strong sign that capital is redeploying uh, out into emerging markets and really trying to make a big uh, move here so be aware that emerging markets and global markets could be aggressively moving into a reversion cycle uh, that is just not evident in the US market data yet next we have the gold phase index still accumulating hard to argue with the fact that gold is up near all-time highs it's been just skyrocketing a um, lot of people uh, were unaware of the what's actually taking place uh, it's kind of funny to actually watch it but um, you know the the real reality here guys is this is just like I've been telling you it's 2002 3 4 all over again we've gone through a bubble phase we've gone through a tech bubble phase uh, we've gone through a pretty much an everything bubble phase um, there's a ton of money that the Fed has put out there and global central banks have put out there we're gonna go through a revaluation phase which is going to be like 2002 3 4 again where everything kind of consolidated everything kind of stagnated and then it turned into a uh, a price appreciation phase for about four five six years until the 2008 9 global crisis now understand that we could e see some global crisis maybe in 2027 28 29 but until we get there we're looking at a revaluation phase with a ton of money in the economy and the consumers are still quite strong so until something breaks we're likely going to resolve to the upside and gold and silver are going to continue to accumulate continue to push higher I expect gold to be above 2300 uh, into the first half of 2024 and pushing higher the custom innovation index which is again older this was from last week um, move back up to the upside this is going to consolidate ladies and gentlemen until we see the fangs index and the technology index and nasdaq really start to move higher just understand that this is going to consolidate possibly into kind of a, uh, a sideways melt up maybe five six seven eight percent but eventually it'll break into a uh, 
uh, a 30-40% rally phase back up into this 90 mode here. Um, but right now, it's just going to consolidate. Remember, we have two, three, maybe four weeks of consolidation before we break clear of the apex pattern I showed you. Fear index moved lower. S&P is, is consolidating, trying to uh, reach that flag. You can almost see the flag across these highs and across these lows. The market sentiment index is stalling near the midpoint level. Uh, we would likely see an upward move resolving out of this, potentially up into this 400 range, this upper green area. That may put the S&P up into this 440, 445, 450 area, and that would show the fear index would be dropping possibly down below 5.9, uh, 5.95, maybe getting into the 5.6, 5.8 area. When the markets trend higher, you can see the fear index drops considerably. Um, we're moving out of that high fear mode into more of a, a consolidated trend mode. Uh, but again, we've got three or four weeks to go before the apex actually hits. Custom real estate monthly conditions, we're pulling back away from these extreme hostile conditions. I, again, once the, um, the Realtor.com updates their data, which they haven't done for two weeks, we'll see where this is at. But this is extremely hostile. That's why I believe we could see um, a price depreciation in real estate, possibly in excess of, you know, maybe, and I, I don't want to scare anybody, but maybe 20, 25% over the next year or so. Um, understand that we, we're going to probably see the stock market stall, we're going to see revaluation, the Fed is going to stay persistent with rates, I think you're going to see Fed rates probably, you know, above 3% uh, for the next two or three years, and then we're going to start to see the Fed shift away from high rates. So maybe by 2025, uh, middle of 2025, we may see the Fed move towards uh, softening rates, maybe the end of 2024, I don't know. But that's going to mean that we have 16, 17 months of um, moderate downward pricing pressure in the real estate market and with regards to uh, real estate transactions overall. And I do believe that this chart has to move down into this 240, 250 area or lower to actually resolve the excess uh, hostility or the excess um, crisis conditions that are involved in the real estate market. I don't see how this is going to uh, resolve itself up in this area uh, over the long period of time. You can see uh, historically getting up into extreme hostile modes resolves to the lower channel. Get up into extreme modes resolves to the lower channel. Get up into extreme modes resolves to the lower channel get up into extreme modes, resolves, this was COVID, into extreme uh, optimism. That's what this is. And we are not in that extreme optimism mode. Now we're in extreme crisis mode. To me, this is extremely hostile. And the only way I can see this resolving itself is back down here to the downside, around 230, 240, maybe a bit lower. Next, we have the custom tech ratio index. Big, strong pop to the upside. I believe as earnings come out, um, you're going to find the technology is really going to be just like emerging markets. It's going to be the reversion trade of 2023. Uh, I think you're going to see technology and innovation really rally 20, 30, maybe 35 percent or more off of these lows. Uh, we need to see how this plays out. It's still very early. Um, I've been telling you this now for two months that back over here, this is a monthly chart, maybe even longer, that buying into technology and taking and creating what I call an anchor position in technology is very sound uh, strategy. The downside risk is very nominal. Um, the upside potential is maybe 30-40%. Um, this has been an excellent uh, opportunity here and it's now resolving back to the upside, which is exactly what I, what I expected. The U.S. to Custom Global Index, this is what I was showing you. The foreign markets are resolving to the upside much faster than the U.S. markets. This upward trending here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if it continues in the global markets, is going to drive the U.S. market up into this area as well. And that's where we're at over the next two or three weeks. This is a weekly chart. 
Um, we just need to see this type of movement continue upward, and this will drive the U.S. markets upward as well. You can see back over here, 2017-18, when the uh, global markets rallied, the U.S. markets continued to rally, but not as strongly. We might enter that same type of phase here, where the global markets might rally back up, emerging markets might rally back up, and the U.S. markets may revert back up into this 70-75% area, which aligns with my reversion up into the, the 41, 4200 for the S&P. U.S. valuation trend index getting good basing bottoming here. This is a, an interesting index because it trends counter to the market. So, for example, here 2018, we had the deep, deep low. We started the, re, we started the, the revaluation uptrend. Now, remember, we had a lot of price volatility through this time frame. And then we peaked up here in uh, 2020, uh, June, July 2020, and started to roll downward. I'm telling you guys, ladies and gentlemen, this is really telling you that um, traders were pulling away from the uh, the rally that took place in 2021, 2020, uh, 2020 uh, and sorry, uh, 2020 and 2021. This is telling you that we had some real opportunity here, but then traders started to pull away. Now we need to see traders start to re -move, move back into this market, expecting valuations to move higher. And that's going to come with a moderate uptrend, possibly back over into this area, which would put us into 2024, 2025, right over in here. And that's really going to be a very strong positive for the U.S. and global markets. The U.S. Custom Leading Index up above this upper channel. Um, again, I think we're going to stall back out down here over the next two or three weeks, possibly down into this 185, uh, 188, 187 area. Um, this is just going to be volatility as we apex, and then it's going to resolve itself to the upside. Now, it's likely going to stay in this, call it 180 to 230 range um, for the next year, uh, meaning it's not going to, I don't expect it to get above this 240 area. It could, but I expect it to stay in this 180 range, sloping upward to 230, 240, and that's going to be our moderate melt up going out through 2023. Next is the volume ratio index, starting to see a, a bit of accumulation take place. Uh, we're not seeing any deep selling. Um, I want you to be aware that this is what I was calling for over the last four or five weeks. We need to see some real capitulation to the upside, uh, meaning accumulation, um, the downside risk dissipating, uh, traders starting to accumulate on the long side, uh, buying the dip, so to say. Uh, in order to see that, I think we need to see about an 8.0, 8.5, maybe 10.0 range. Um, but it looks like it's coming. It may come over the next two or three weeks. I would expect this to stay moderately consolidated uh, over the next two or three weeks and then potentially get a pop, uh, possibly in early February. Commodity to gold index had a great big pop last week consolidated this was two weeks ago consolidated again we're out of this downward channel ladies and gentlemen this is good this is accumulation this is telling you that traders are starting to accumulate shares expecting upward trending we've moved back up into a moderate positive territory if this continues we're going to see it move above the 2.1 2.2 area throughout the next four or five months and this is really telling you that they believe that the unwinding has uh, ended the and now we're moving into an early stage accumulation phase um, and that's telling us again that we might see some uh, increase in commodity prices we may see some increase in stock prices it tells us essentially that this deep deep low um, was potentially the bottom back in October uh, September and as long as we continue to trend moderately higher we're going to get some uh, price appreciation Metals trend index. Okay, guys, this is the bottom line with what's going on. Gold and silver are in an unprecedented mode right now. The fear over the next four years is going to grow and grow and grow. We have seen, and I've gone over this many times, month after month or week after week as I go through this, we've seen numerous 4,500-point rally phases. Back over here, 4,500-point rally phase consolidation. 4,500-point rally phase, consolidation. 4,500-point rally phase from here 
would put the next target at 14,300 roughly. We're at 12,400. So we have about another 1,900 points to the upside to go before gold is going to stall back out. And we are at this previous high resistance area. I believe gold and silver will stall out over the next couple of weeks, two or three weeks, and then possibly resume a 2,000 point rally back up to the upside, targeting this 14,300, 14,500 rally point. So be aware, this is a fantastic move in gold and silver. A lot of people miss this, thinking that gold and silver were going to collapse, waiting for the markets to collapse. This is <clears throat> 2003 and four all over again. And remember, I lived it. Uh, I can't tell you how important it is to be aware of what's actually happening. Next, we have the uh, FANGS index. Looks like I forgot to t title it, but consolidating, moving higher, just like I told you. We really need to see this start to break out to the upside. The technology index started to move higher, but we're not getting this FANGS index <clears throat> moving higher. That means that there is accumulation in these stocks, but we're not seeing real price appreciation yet. So be aware, this will spike to the upside probably in February, March, April, uh, and really surprise people. The metals trend index, all right, we've highlighted this. This is one of my older custom indexes. Highlighted this moving forward, big strong move in metals. We're getting back up into this, what I call the golden, uh, uh, not golden triangle, but the yellow brick road. Um, I think we're gonna stall out here, guys. I think gold and silver are gonna stall out. Um, we're gonna see two or three weeks of stalling before it rallies back up into this area. And this is gonna recenter us back into what I call the yellow brick road between these two yellow lines. Big strong trend. Expect one, two, maybe three weeks of consolidation, maybe a bit of a blip downward. And then I think we're gonna move another 15, 20% higher back up into this area. Uh, and maybe even higher back into new all-time highs should be back up in here 485 495 um, and that's going to put us at new all-time highs stock market cash index weekly good strong this is the global uh, smart cash index good strong rally phase we broke through this very strong we're back up to this resistance area we could see it consolidate a little bit over here, but emerging markets are really, and global markets are really kind of leading the way right now. So be aware that the volatility we could see over the next few weeks, I'm trying to warn you almost every chart now, but we could see some real sideways trending, but overall we've got a good solid breakout. Uh, I just don't see this extending uh, until we get into February 6th, 7th, 8th, maybe beyond that. Um, then I think it's going to extend higher. I think we're going to be looking at a week or two weeks of uh, consolidation, and then it'll start to extend higher. All right, the global, uh, sorry, the rotational modeling index is uh, still 25%. Uh, basically, it's weekly bullish, daily bearish. We have allocation of 25% for weekly, 75% for daily. That nets us into a 50% bearish. 50% cash. We are getting some signs that we could be turning bullish over the next couple of weeks, but nothing is triggered yet. So we're still holding this position, uh, which is 50% bearish, 50% cash. Remember, this is for your retirement account, your 401k, your IRA. This is for your retirement account. Again, your trading account would be 20% cash, 55, or sorry, 20% stocks, 55% cash, 25% metals. Metals is our hedge position, doing extremely well. The cash position did extremely well over the last 12, 15 months. Um, we've been in this pretty much mode since August of 2021. So understand that we've been very well protected uh, and have ridden this out very efficiently. Uh, the markets are starting to turn bullish this week. Gold turned bullish on a weekly basis. We're waiting for this trigger on the SPY, on the daily, to turn bullish. We don't have it yet, but when it does, we're going to move into a, a more aggressive mode of trading. Until then, we're staying comfortably uh, allocated and sidelined, so to say, waiting for the markets to trend. And, of course, this is the results of the MENT rotational modeling system going back to 1996. 
Uh, I want you to be aware that we performed very, very well last year. We had a good solid end of the year with a little bit of upward uh, trending in the last couple of quarters. We're waiting for the uh, new momentum trigger to kick in. Okay, real estate. We've covered that in the real estate system. I'll skip these. We'll go to the stock market index. This is the apex formation right here. You can see this channel and this channel. It's really off of these lows here. We're apexing right now. We've got about two, three weeks to go before the apex is complete. I do expect some volatility here. I would not be surprised to see the markets pull back over the next week or two, um, really kind of boosting the, the shorts, thinking, oh my God, look, the market's going to collapse. It's just volatility as we apex. I believe we apex and resolve to the upside, moving back up into this 12, 1250 area by the uh, second half of 2023. The valuations index is starting to move higher. We do need to see this move out of this red zone. So understand that this is really still consolidating, basing, bottoming. If we're going to see any upward trending, we need to see this move up to 61, 62 area, up into kind of where this I'm pointing. Um, that's going to show us that we're now seeing actual price appreciation in the stock market. We're not there yet. We're basing, consolidating, kind of sideways, apexing. You can almost see it here if I drew a line across here and across this high. You can see we're kind of flagging out here. Another couple of weeks, I think. This is a weekly chart. I think another, by, by February 10th or 14th or 15th, I think we could be in a real solid upward reversion trend. Custom Volatility Index, we've broken this channel. Um, big, big news here, ladies and gentlemen. This could trade sideways, could move deeper down here at about 8, 7.6. That would be a pullback, the volatility that I'm telling you about. Ideally, what's going to happen here, ladies and gentlemen, is, you know, we've kind of seen this move here, this upward move with this consolidation. Think of that as kind of like this with this consolidation and then this to this consolidation. This is kind of where we're at here. As we get past this deep, deep low, we could see moderate trending until we get up above this 10, 11, 12, which is extreme trending, bullish, extreme bullish trending. This is a base setting up, an upward momentum rever reversion trade. This is, in my opinion, the same thing, an upward reversion trade setting up. We could see a couple of pullbacks. We could see some things that look scary. Um, but I think we're in a moderate upside reversion trade, and I think this is what everyone needs to prepare for, is a real solid a melt up through the end of 2023, leading to new highs in 2024, 25, 26, and then a peaking in 26, 27, 28, somewhere in that area, and then a big pullback. So uh, there you go. So if I come back over here, and drag this back over here. These are the long-term charts that I've shown you in my videos for weeks and months. And I want you to be aware that this is really the setup. This is our breakdown criteria. If the markets were something were to break, uh, global crisis, war, what have you, we would be looking at a breakdown level and we'd be looking at this level as key critical support. That puts us around 3,600, 3,560. Those would be key support levels. We need to get below these levels if we're gonna see some big breakdown event take place. My analysis says that we've ended a wave four pullback. We're starting a wave five rally. The wave five rally is gonna see uh, 2023 move into this area try to consolidate around this area then near the end of 2023 early 2024 try to move up into this area then consolidate and then move up into this area and then consolidate and move up to an ultimate peak here which is 67 6800 that puts us around 2026 2027 which is when I believe the next big massive peak will set up and we will go into a crisis phase here. So ideally, ladies and gentlemen, we have essentially a wave one down here to a, a three stage wave two or wave three. So this is basically wave A, 
B, C, D, E. And the way I would count it is one, two, three, pull back, wave two, A, B, C, wave three, pull back, wave four, and then some kind of a rally up here under 67, 6800 as our wave five. <clears throat> and that is your big long term picture for what's taking place. And this is why we have the opportunity to get in and ride these big trends all the way up. Now understand that this is, you know, how big is this, you might be asking? Let me try to explain it to you. This is a 2800 point rally in the ES totaling a 74% rally phase from this point. So understand that is going to make a huge opportunity for traders going forward. And I had uh, a member comment just last week, uh, you know who you are, I'm not going to say your name, but it's very rare for people uh, analysts to make predictions like this. I mean, uh, who do you know that can predict something six, seven, eight years out? Uh, now, granted, I could be wrong. I'm not telling you that I'm 100% accurate, but I'm telling you that this is what I believe is the most likely outcome uh, based on my cycle research and my predictive modeling. But again, it's very, very rare to be able to understand the markets like this, to be able to help guide you, you know, six, seven, ten years out uh, and to be able to actually point out where we need to look for opportunity and how this is going to set up. So be aware that Ment.com is different from everybody else. Too many people are focused on the extreme short term. They don't understand the dynamics of market trend. <clears throat> they don't understand what's actually happening. And now, granted, I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm human. I could be wrong. I, we could end up in a downtrend, and if so, I will alert you and keep you aware of it. But so far, I have been nailing these markets over the past two and a half, three and a half years with my predictions and my outcomes, and I think the long-term setup is this big, broad, upward cycle phase that I'm telling you, everybody and your mother-in-law is going to be trying to short every single one of these pullbacks. They're going to be telling you, this is it. The world's going to end. Everything's going to collapse. I'm telling you, you need to be patient and wait till we get out here to 2026, 2027, 2028. And then we'll start to, to really see what goes on with this market trend. Okay, guys, follow my research. Join my website. Uh, I'm going to be making some big changes this year. I'm actually going to start charging for my services and my tools, moderate amounts. I'm going to keep it very price effective. But understand that um, I do this for a living and I'm doing this to help you and it's worth a small amount to help you see where these opportunities are and to trade them effectively. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.